Hi everyone, welcome to this webinar. Um, so Jetic has made, I've put together a series of webinar to explain different functionalities of Jetic Log, mostly in, in this series, but we'll also do another series for the other software. Um, so today's webinar is going to be concentrated on analysis, assays, QA, QC, uh, average composites, different functionalities that are in Jetic Log um, covering these. Uh, so this is this this is the second of two uh, webinars uh, concentrated on analysis uh, because there's a lot of things in Jetic Log uh, touching these fields. Okay, so um, I'm just going to start right away with Jetic uh, Log with the assays, uh, just to remind you what we did on last webinar, and if you were not there, I would suggest maybe to go and, and watch that webinar. Um, so we've covered different things about how to set up your database to accept your certificates or your assays, okay? So, so one of the things we've done was what were the allowed codes, how to uh, set up your QAQC, how to set up your columns in the asset titles, how to define your zones, lab, labs, and things like this. Okay, so, so that's what we've done, and we ended up by importing a certificate with, in the uh, database. Okay, so we're going to start from there today and just continue on. Okay, so if we go back to the data we've imported last time, um, so you ended up having uh, these data in here. Okay, so like I mentioned, maybe I should have color coded differently those two columns because they have different units, so it doesn't really make sense right now, but it doesn't really matter for this example. Okay. All right, so so we've imported all our data. We have a calculated field that calculates the uh, which one to take in priority and so on and so on. Okay. So I don't know if you've noticed, there's three little uh, tabs in here, so these are your own QAQC. The second one is about lab QAQC. In the example I gave you, there were no lab QAQC, but most of the time you will receive uh, some lab QAQC, so they're internal QAQC, and you will be able to import them. So basically, whenever you have a result and you don't, and the, and the certificate is imported and doesn't recognize the sample number, it's going to put it in there into your lab QAQC. So later on, you can compare your QAQC with the lab QAQC, see how they compare and if, if they're doing a good job at doing their own, in their own QAQC, basically. And the third one is actually one of the most inter interesting one now, is the average composite. So basically, whenever you have a zone, you can just go ahead and calculate what is your average composite. For this example, I'm just going to take another drill hole that may have a better zone than the one we do have um, in our... Okay, so, so if we go in here, so we can find here that there is a zone, so it's all color-coded, and we know that f probably from here all the way here, there's a zone into this drill hole. I'm going to go into edit mode. So I'm going to select the beginning of my zone. Well, actually, it goes before that. Okay, so, wow, that's a huge zone. Okay, so this is a fake database, so don't worry. Um, we all hope to get those kind of intercepts, but um, it rarely happens. Okay, so what we do is uh, we select the zone in here in the assay. And then you can just right click and say add an average composite. So last time I've created a zone B, so I'm just going to take zone B for an example. I'm taking zone B. Okay, by default it's going to write minus one, minus one, minus one everywhere. And that's normal. Don't worry about it. It's normal. You just have to press the little calculator here and everything's going to be calculated for you. Okay, so, so if you were going to do this now, According to the zone B that we've defined before, and because we know the deviation, your downhole surveys, and all that stuff, we can calculate what is the horizontal thickness, vertical thickness, the true thickness. Like I said, this is like gigantic, but anyway, so this is a fake example. Um, and what is your weighted average, and so on. In this particular um, 
tab, I have some assay titles with no results in them. And that's why I have errors in here, is just because there is absolutely no values in here. So I can do the same thing with the one that we just created. I just need to pick up my drill hole number uh, that I created the other day. And uh, okay, so that was 4x. Okay, so these are the analysis that we had. Um, well, this drill hole is kind of interesting from here to, let's see here. Okay, so this kind of a zone. My color codes, like I mentioned, were not ideal for this one. But anyway, so you see the idea. Uh, so if I want to create this, I have to be in edit mode. I go here. Oops. I'm just, oops, sorry. I'm just going to take this. Add an average composite. You choose which zone it is. Let's take again zone B. And press a little calculator. And in this case, we have a through thickness that is 1.98 meters. And we do have a weighted average of, of uh, 6.2 gram tons uh, for your AU final for this zone. Okay, so, so this is how you do average composites. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, other thing that I forgot to mention, or I maybe I did, but very briefly, is in your assay titles here. There's two different, two little elements in here that could be of interest. So let's take the, the table that we created last time. So the first one is the element for the preview. Okay, so the element for the preview is the little box that you get there when you are in the description tab that kind of looks like a strip log. It's just a simplified log, like a graphical way of representing your data and so on. So if you want your assays to be displayed there, you have to choose one column that will be displayed there. Okay, so it could be your AU final, for example, because this is your final results. And by doing this, it's going to take the color code that you've assigned to that color, and that's what's going to be shown in that little preview in there. The second one here is the certificate. So because one sample can be used uh, in different assays, you may have different results for one um, different, I mean, different certificates for one sample number. So you have to select from which table, from which column, I mean, you want to display the certificate. Okay, so you can only choose one. Uh, in this case, probably most of our results are from the uh, atomic absorption. So I'm just going to take this one and I'll do a save. I'll show you what it does. Close. So if I go back into my description tab, I go to the webinar one, okay. So in this case, I have to recalculate things. So I'm just going to press a little calculator. I can press a little calculator for down there too. It added a column with your certificates. So every time, every, every time you have a results, okay. So this sample number associated with this column is from that certificate. Okay. So you have a column called certificate that shows you directly what it is. Also, if you look at it. Now there's a new column in here in the preview, and that is the um, when we selected one of the column to sh be shown in here, and I've selected AU final. So if you go in here, you can just have a look. So you have the from and to of the sample and the result of the sample and so on. It does tell you on which column this was taken and what is the result. So depending on your color codes, it can be uh, better done than the one I've done here, but. Uh, you see the idea? You can display this into your preview. All right, so these are little tricks uh, that a lot of people don't know but are there, so, so you may as well use them. Let's go now to uh, the QAQC graphs. Okay, so in this case, I only have three QAQC, so it doesn't really make sense to use this data to do the QAQC graph. So I'm going to use different drill holes just to show you a little bit how it's done. So let's go into the, uh, these graphs uh, in here. Okay, so there's different graphs for QAQC. So the first one is the RMA. So RMA stands for Reduce Major Axis. 
and it's mostly used when you have to compare two values that are unknown. Okay, so basically if you have an assay, for example, and a duplicate. So that would be something you would do. Okay, don't forget to choose your table. In this case, I'm going to leave it at assay because in webinar there's not enough duplicate. We only have one. Uh, but this is how you do it. Okay, so you can change the which element you want to compare. You can also change the factor. So these are the conversions uh, between the different things. You may filter by certificates, labs, dates, and so on. Okay, so maybe you want to filter also by types of duplicates uh, and so on. Okay. You have to choose what is your confidence level. Do you want 95%, 90%, 80% confidence level? And finally, you have, do you want to include the allowed codes or not? Okay, so, so if you include them, it's going to replace them with their value. And do you want to include zero values? So if values are equal to zero, do you want to include them and just ignore them? It's also possible to filter by drill hole. So you can go ahead and just select a few drill hole or just a specific drill hole or whatever are your needs. I'm just going to take a few now um, just to show you. Okay, so assay duplicates. So these are for unknown um, values when you want to compare to unknown values. You will have to, excuse me, this is like a fake database, so data is going to fit perfectly, probably. Uh, in a real world, it's never as nice as this, okay? So you would get dots like around this line and and you would just get a different um, uh, linear regression, okay? So, so here you have some stats about um, your data and how they fit, okay? Um, if you hover, there's like, um, what is your original, um, assay, what is your duplicate, what are their values, which certificate they are, which date, and which drill hole, and blah, blah, blah. So you can find all of these in here. It's also possible to put a logarithmic scale if you need it. Uh, you can also ignore or remove sample from selection. So the sample is still going to be shown, but it's going to be an empty circle instead. Okay, so if I was going to do it, it would be like this, and then you do refresh, and uh, where was it? Oops, I don't know. I'm just gonna do another one. Okay, so so you have an empty circle. So what it does, it does a big red X saying that your calculation is not good anymore because you've ignored one of the data. So if you wanna have it recalculate, you just press this little, update button and then it will recalculate the linear regression and all your stats ignoring that sample. Okay, so so that's what it does. Okay. All right, so this is for RMA graphs. So there's quite a bit of things in here. You can also export to PDF, print them, save just this graph and, and so on and so on. Okay, so so this is like I said uh, an ideal case, which will never happen in real life, probably, but you will all hope so. Um, so you do get, you know, your confidence level and your linear regression in here. Okay. So that's for RMA graphs. We also have standard graphs. Okay. So again, I'm going to take the table. I'm going to look at one element. And then you have to look at one reference. Do you want to have your standard in this database, uh, in this project or this table? I have three different um, standards that have been defined. So don't forget when you define your standard, it is associated with a table. So and for this table, I have three of them. Okay, so I'm just going to take um, one of them just to show you. You can filter by certificate number if you just want to do for one certificate, by lab, by date. Um, and then you have to choose between two different confidence level. Okay, so you can put one standard deviation, two standard deviation, for example, and just look at this. You can choose on how you want your data to be sorted by date, by sample number, certificate number, by survey, or whatever. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it like this. Well, actually, I'm just going to put by sample number. Okay, 
Again, same thing. Uh, do you want to include allowed codes? Do you want to include the zero values? And in here, what type of QAQC it is? Do you want to use just your QAQC or do you want to use also the lab QAQC? Okay, so this is when it can get interesting. Uh, in this particular uh, database, I don't have any lab QAQC, so I'm not going to select it. Okay, again, I'm just going to select a few drill holes just to, uh, to show you what it does and then run this thing. Okay, so let's enlarge this. Um, okay, so there's a lot of lines here. Uh, what's important is the red lines are your own data. The blue ones are the ones from your standard. Okay, so for example, the, the mean of the standard is in here in the, in the full line here, the blue line here. This is the first standard deviation and this two, the second standard deviation for your uh, standard. Well, the red line here is the mean that you get from your sample. And this is what, well, from your sample, from your QAQC that you've received. And this is the first standard deviation, second standard deviation. So what you notice here is some of your samples are quite far from what they should be. Okay, so a lot of these QAQC that you've done would probably fail in this case. Okay, so. So what you can do to track them, same kind of idea as the other graph, you can just go over it and just look at what it is. So in this case, this is sample 4016, and it comes from the drill hole FOR uh, 1404, and has a value of 4.31, it has the certificate 004, and the certificate date was 2017, 10, 27. Okay, so, so you can track these, um, these standards down, and then you can just go and call the lab saying, okay, there's something wrong, maybe you want to reassay those, this batch or something, right? So you can just do some follow-up on what you want to do, okay? So you do get also a little bit of stats in here. So what is the number of, of standards that we're taking? What is the minimum? What is the maximum? What is the mean? What is your standard deviation for your, for your own, um, well, own QAQC, like your own standard, okay? So quite useful. It's well known. These kind of graphs are done a lot of times in the industry, so you will probably use this as well. If we do the blank, blanks are very similar to the standard, except um, that, okay, let's do first and second, except that they are located around zero. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a few to drill hole again. And you know that a, that a blank should be around zero. So in this case, see the, this one is kind of far. It has a value of 0.5 gram ton. So it's quite far from zero. And, and maybe all the samples that are in this batch are probably BAs. And so, so you may want to call the lab and say, okay, redo this, this whole batch or something. Okay, so, so all of that certificate, certificate 003 in this case, maybe you want to reassay it um, and so on. All right, so this is, oh, you can change the sorting as well in here. Uh, it doesn't really matter, okay? So these are for uh, standard in blank. Now you can also do percentage of error versus the grade. Um, so again, this is mostly used to compare um, two unknowns. So in this case, it could be assay and duplicate, or it could be actually, um, yeah, as in duplicates mostly, but, and then you can just say what kind of duplicate it is, use some filters. I'm just gonna add a few drill hole again. And um, that's a lot of samples. All right. All right, so what we see here is the distribution of your data. So you have your average grade in here, okay? And it says the average grade is the original plus a check. So in this case, in the duplicate divided by two. 
And then you have your percentage of error. So the percentage of error is the check minus the, uh, well, the check is the duplicate minus the original divided by the average grade multiplied by 100. Okay, so, so you have your percentage of error in here and it says like, okay, so you have your mean in here and you have 80% of your samples within this range and then within like minus 18.52 to 26.56 and then you have 90% of your samples within minus 30.59 to 73.12. Well, again, this is just a fake database, so don't take these numbers as um, as as what they should look like necessarily. Okay, so this is um, so it's, so this is the percentage of grade versus percentage of error versus a grade, and you have the percentage of error and the rank, which is just a different way of displaying your data. Okay, I'm just going to take a few drill hole again. Okay, I'm just going to keep everything in there and just show you right away. Okay, so in this case, whoa, okay. Um, so in this case, you have your absolute absolute percentage of error. So the absolute percentage of error is your duplicates minus the original divided by the average grade multiplied by 100. And here you have your Santal rank. So, so you see that this one is kind of really far off. And again, you can just have a look at what's going on with this one, okay? So you have 30 samples in this, or 30, um, duplicates that we're taking uh, for this graph and so on. Okay, so you can just have a look at your different um, ranks. Okay. All right. Um, so these are the most of the QAQC that a lot of people are using. Um, Okay, so let's say that you've discovered that some of your assays were wrong and you just decided to call the lab and say, okay, can you just re-assay a few samples and just send me back another uh, certificate, okay? So let's say you've received a new certificate for samples that you've already entered data via another certificate in your database. Okay, so what will happen? Is if I'm trying to re-import a certificate on assays that and that have already been entered. Um, whoops, sorry. Okay, so here I'm gonna go webinar again. I'm gonna go and get the new certificate that I just received from the lab that just contains a few samples in this case. Um, just a second, okay, so certificate, assay, okay, so webinar, okay, so I'm I just called it webinar two. I can actually show you is just um, okay d -d 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 certificate assay. So webinar two contains only just a few samples. Okay, so I just asked the lab to reassay sample one, seventy-one, seventy-two, seventy-three, seventy-four, seventy-five. Okay, so. So that's what I've received back from the lab on this second certificate. Okay, so if I'm trying to re-import this, okay, so we have the importation template that we've done last time. I know that I can go and fetch the date at this location. I can just do a load and everything's gonna be already set up. So this is the master lab, so I'm just gonna put this. Okay, so I'm gonna try to import. Okay, so it's gonna prompt you some questions because there's already a value for this certificate, for, for this sample, for this particular column. Okay, so it says, do you wanna replace this data five by this one 10? And if you say no, well, it's just not gonna replace anything and just keep the first certificate that you've entered. But if you say yes, you will have to specify a reason. Was it an importation error? Was it a QAQC retake? Or you can just say other and just write down your own comments on why you've re-entered this data a second time. Okay, so in this case, let's just apply it to all of these uh, five new results that I'm doing. They are all QAQC retake in this case, so, so you can just do this. Okay, so you say okay. 
So, oh, there were six, sorry. Um, so if you say save, you're just going to save a CSV of this importation report. I'm not going to save it in this case. Okay, so if I go there now and I go back to my assay, I'm going to do a refresh in here. See this one? The certificate has changed for number two because it has been replaced. Okay, so, and, and these ones also, they were on this one. Okay, so, so it is possible to re-import certificate, re-import assays doing this, okay? Um, there's actually a place in here, in the, 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 the utilities, that is called re-assay log. So let's go and have a look at this, okay? So, so you may want to check just webinar, so this is a table, and here it's going to tell you what happened with those reassays. Okay, so in this case, these ones, it was re-entered, okay, and it was a QAQC retake, QAQC retake, QAQC retake, and so on. Okay, so it just gives you the reason, so you can go back and have a look at what happened with this. Okay, so you, you can filter by reason, by date, by elements, by certificate number, and so on and so on. So, so you can just track back what happened with your certificates. So that's kind of important to be able to do this at some point. Okay, so this is the reassay log. Okay, other things you can do, okay, once you have uh, re-entered an assay, or even just to look at your at your assays, okay, so you, there's a sample manager, there's a certificate manager in here, um, certificate data, certificates here. Okay, so I'm gonna go through all these buttons to just demystify them. Okay, so let's start with the certificate data. Okay, what the certificate data does is you take your table, you just say verify, and then you can choose all your survey or just part of your survey. So in this case, it was um, just this drill hole. So I'm just gonna take one and just say, okay, and it says finish. Okay, so it means there was absolutely no problem. Okay, if you wanted to, you could delete certificate references without results. So if you re-imported a whole certificate, so you may want to delete the uh, the reference to that certificate for some reason. Okay, so it's all possible. Also. Here you have verify a certificate. So in this case, what it does, it's like if you were importing a certificate, but it's not going to import it. It's just going to compare what you're trying to import with what's in the database. So if I was going to try to re-import or use the um, webinar, let's take, um, which one is it? Let's take this one. Importation template. Whoops, I'm in the wrong table. Okay, test webinar, sell, this is, I'm just going to load it and just verify. Oops, certificate number. So I want to compare two certificates, so that's why it's asking me for a certificate. Well, it says I have seven lines in the error, so my original certificate doesn't match the certificate I'm trying to verify, and that's just because these are the ones that I've re-imported, okay? And plus there's this one because this one, I didn't import it the first time because it was not an allowed code. If you were there in the previous webinar, I forgot to uh, to add it later on. So, so, so that's why I have those errors. So you can see that there's a difference between the original certificate and what's in the database right now. So that's the one. Okay, if we continue, you have the samples manager. Okay, samples manager. Uh, if you do have a lot of samples, it may take a little bit of time to, to load. Uh, before even doing anything, you can do some filters on this. So you can filter on a few drill hole or by lab or by date, okay? And then you go back to data. And if you do a filter, it's gonna go a little bit faster. Um, so what you can do in here, you can search for certificate. So if you have a certificate number, you just type down your certificate and it's going to show you the different samples or you can just go in here and pick up a certificate um, 
from the table that you want. So let's say that we take webinar again. Okay, so I have two certificates in this one. So it's going to show me the different samples that were in this, um, that were taken from this certificate. So if you notice, the last one and the first ones are not there because they have been reimported. So we have reassayed them and they will be found in the second one in here. Okay, so, so this is just a look at it. If you look at samples, you can do the uh, similar idea and instead you can just go in here and just look for your samples, but in most of the time you'll have thousands of samples, so you don't want to do this. So you can just type down your sample number, so let's say 0009 for example. What it's going to do, it's going to tell you, okay, um, this is coming from that certificate number. And I have a value from AU and uh, AAS and AU graph in this one coming from that one. Okay, so if I was going to type in one, there's no graph metric in this one. There's no value for graph metric in this one. Okay, so so that's what it does. Okay, so if you would like to assign a graph metric value to that sample according to that certificate number, you could just say activate modification, you double click in here, and then there will be a value assigned to, to AU grav according to that certificate number, which has no results, but still you could assign it. Okay. So that's what it does, the sample manager. The certificate manager um, is mostly used, uh, for example, uh, to just take one drill hole, that's this one. Okay, so I'm just going to take one element. You can select and do more filters. And what it does, it just tells me, okay, for that element in that drill hole, you have all of these samples. You have the from twos, you have the results, you have everything uh, that is related to this. Okay, so now. So you know the certificate number and so on and so on. And then you know here that you have part of it is from certificate two and so on. Okay, so so it's just like the final results that you get for each certificate. So you can just make a search from survey or elements and, and things like this. And then you can have the list uh, popping up for you. And then you can export everything in CSV uh, files if you want to. All right. Um, okay, so there there are other things that you that are related to assays. So, for example, if I was going to go into project and coordinates, uh, not coordinates, sorry, it would be information. There's something called summary in here. And it says the number of samples, the total sample length, the number of QAQC sample. Um, in this case, it will not display anything for those drill holes. Okay. So in this case, see, um, the first one didn't do anything because it's just a planned drill hole, so it's not drilled in yet. Okay. So for example, in this drill hole, I have 419 samples. And this covers 209.42 meters of, of core, and I have 28 QAQC samples. Okay, so, so it just gives you like a little summary of what's there. Also, you can also go back into the utilities and go into the summary database. So for example, in this case, I'm just going to take this database because there's more things. Okay, you can search by project, by survey, start date, end date, description date, or certificate. Okay, and then you can just have little stats about what's going on. So now I've just taken everything from the start. It's not a very good example because a lot of the, this is a fake database and a lot of these don't have start date and, you know, I don't have any data entered for these uh, into my information table in, in, in the project tab. Okay, but it gives you stats normally on what's 
on what has been drilled, the number of samples that were taken, the number of QAQC taken, and so on and so on. Okay. And at the bottom it says assay. Okay, so this is another project, uh, not another project. Okay, so DDH, you have them in two different projects for no year, and then you have only one project in 2018. Uh, so in the no year part, okay, it says land analyze sample QAQC. So if you look at this, it's not the same numbers as these. Okay, these are because I haven't received samples. So these are actually assays that I've received my uh, results and have been imported using a certificate directly into the genetic log. Well, in here I have 12,492 samples, but most of my samples were not imported using the import certificate tab. Instead, they were imported directly using SCSV or Excel spreadsheet using the import button here. So I've made an importation template and then I've imported it into my database. So it doesn't recognize it as, as being linked to a certificate in that case and that's why I don't have the same stats. Okay, so if you do want to import your historical assays and things like this, it's this is a very good way of doing it. So you can just an imp do an import template and then just go do an import. Okay, so you will be able to import CSV or Excel. Um, if you do have historical assays and you do have results and from twos, but you don't have the sample number, um, just put um, just put a dash. Okay, so in Geotech log will recognize a dash like and will allow you to have several dash and not tell you that these are duplicate uh, sample numbers. Okay, so so the, this is the only character or like the negative sign or whatever, like just do a negative sign and it will recognize that it's just an unknown sample number. And it's not going to bug you saying, okay, you have two samples that have the same numbers. Because when you import, when you type down your sample numbers, if you have two the same numbers, it's, it's going to prompt you an error. So, so if you put a negative sign, it's going to let you import a bunch of samples, even though you don't know the sample numbers. Okay, so that's a little trick. Um, and one little thing, one more thing about ge geotic and sample numbers is if you go in here, I don't know if you've noticed or if you're even using the mineralization tab, there's a little place here called sample number. Um, okay, so let's say I'm adding some mineralization, so I don't know, I have some um, pyrite. Okay, so I have some pirate, I have 2% pirate. I'm gonna do this. Maybe I know that from this interval, let's say this interval goes from zero to two, this is gonna be sample D00 or D100, let's say. Okay, because I know this, this is not happening. Okay, so if I do this and save, well, okay, I have to write down the description. Okay, now it's bugging me because zero to two has already samples, so it doesn't want me to do it. Okay, so I'm just gonna um, go from 80 to 81 instead, okay, because samples already exist in the database. Okay, so, so if I do this 80 to 81, I have pirate, and I know this is gonna be my sample number. If I go into my acid table in here, you'll see that 80 to 81, you already have a sample number uh, entered automatically in here, okay? If you do enter your sample number before N, let's say that you have from zero to one, for example, you know that this is sample A001. If I was gonna write down this, okay, I'm just gonna do a plus, I'm gonna go from zero to one, and I'm gonna choose something else. Okay, I don't know, I have cuprite, okay. 
see, it does recognize that this interval corresponds to that sample number. Okay, so automatically it will link it um, directly. But this only works within your assay table. If you have a personalized table, you cannot do this kind of links. Okay, so just telling you. Okay. Um, I think that's pretty much it for today. Um, we've covered a lot of grounds in the last two webinars about assays and QAQC and average composites and how to set up geotech log. Um, so I'm going to be ready to answer any questions that you may have. Um, and so don't hesitate. I'm here and don't, if you're leaving right now, just don't miss out the next uh, webinar, uh, the next um, so there's still a few webinars to come and, uh, and don't miss them out, okay?